Hey guys, check this out. With one click of a button, you can produce a table, and that's, you can do that by using macros. And I'm gonna show you how to do that in this tutorial coming up. So to begin working with macros, you need this developer tab. And I've got it right here, but uh, yours might not be there if you've never used this before. So um, the way to get it is to go to the file tab and go to options and then under customize ribbon see how my developer tab is checked yours might not be if it's if you haven't used this before or if you're using a new computer um, so click on the developer tab make sure it's checked and then press OK and now you have this new developer tab and this is where we find um, where the macros are located so to record a macro macro security and how to locate and also visual basic which we'll get into later so now we're going to assign shortcut keys to our macro so the first thing you want to do is click on record macro and we'll give our uh, macro a name so we know which one it is uh, we'll call it upcoming uh, you can't use spaces in the title of a macro so i did an underscore um, upcoming workshop okay and you have two options here in the stored in if you want to store the macro in all documents you use, you can um, do that, or just this document. And then you can add a description if you like. Um, sometimes we forget what the macros actually do, so sometimes it's good to um, add a description. And then, uh, so I'm going to type in one for this. Okay, so now we have our description, we kind of get what that is. And then we're going to click, click the keyboard button. And this is where we want to assign, assign a keyboard command that'll allow us to run the macro, or after we've recorded it, we could press it to uh, run the macro. And I'll show you what that's like in a second, but first we have to assign a uh, key to it. So some keys are already taken in Word. So if we try to do Control T, um, that's used for controlling, or sorry, um, um, assigning a hanging indent indent so we don't want to override that uh, let's backspace so get, get rid of that you don't want to override commands like even something like control C like you don't want to override something simple like that that you can use um, in Word already you want to take a new something new if you're re recording a macro so let's do control alt and T control alt T okay so that's also used for the trademark symbol so you don't use that one so again that one's taken so don't override it uh, you can override it but uh, it's best not to. And then let's try Alt T, unassigned. So we see unassigned here. And that means uh, we could assign that shortcut. So you just have to remember the shortcut um, that was assigned to the macro. So we're going to assign it to this one. Okay, so we press Alt T. And then we're going to press assign. So that's going to become assigned. Now that's our code for doing this macro that we're going to do. Um, so that's So we'll click the assign button. Okay, and it shows the current keys, that's what um, this is for. All right, so once you close this, uh, the macro will start, so then we have to be very um, specific in what steps we do because um, the macro will record every step you do. So um, just be careful. Sometimes I like to save my work before I start a macro, and then you know if I completely mess it up, then I can just exit and uh, go back to where I save. But uh, hopefully that doesn't happen. So once we close, you see your mouse turns into a square kind of recorder. Um, and that means we're ready to record. So the next step would be go to the insert. So we're going to record creating a table. Maybe we want to create the same table in a document over and over again. And whenever we just press that control key that we sent, the uh, Alt T, um, that table will pop up again. So the first thing we'll do, we'll go to insert, and then table, four columns. OK. And then so we've got that step in there. and then. Now we're actually going to type in, so if you wanted to, you could stop the recording right now. I like to press this button down here um, if you just wanted to create the table every time. But uh, we'll actually fill out the table, and then uh, that'll be part of the macro as well. So just filling out this, uh, uh, there's only one problem. You can't move the way you would. You can't mouse click to the next point, so you just have to press rely on tab and enter, and shift tab as well. So we'll fill out this information. So just press tab to get to the next line, um, and if you have to go back, press shift tab.
Okay, so you just have to remember that while you're running a macro, um, you're, you cannot use the mouse to select text or tables, but uh, you can do this in a different way. So if I do the layout tab, and, they, and then say select table, or say just select, I can, do, I can highlight it that way. So I can't highlight it with the mouse, I have to do it that way um, while I'm recording a macro. And then, then in the table styles group, on the design tab, I can pick uh, pick one of them. So I can pick any one of these. And let's choose that green one. So we pick that style, and then you can move, you can press the up and down keys. So click somewhere in the table. You can use the directional keys on your keyboard. Again, you can't use your mouse to do that, but you can use the arrow keys to move up to that top row. And then go back to that select in the layout tab. And then choose select row. And now we want to um, align this into the center. And click align center so the headings are right in the middle of the, um, the columns. And then you can stop recording. I like doing uh, pressing stop down here. Okay, so we've done everything we need to do to the uh, tables. And click right here, stop. And that's it for our uh, macro. So now that we've recorded it, uh, we can run it. And that's the next step. All right, so here's the magic part. So we're going to go to a new document. And with our um, to run the macro, all we need to do is type in our shortcuts. So I just type Alt-T. And then you see the table pop up. And uh, you might have noticed on the second column, second row, I made a mistake. But that's OK. We're going to fix that. So yeah, just like all my mistakes, I totally did that on purpose. Uh, but uh, maybe this is a good, actually I didn't mean to do that, but maybe this is a good way to uh, show you how to edit uh, macros. Um, so see how we have this extra number in there? I want to fix that for the room. Like, I don't want that to keep popping up and then having to change that. So um, I can go to the macros and you see a bunch of them here. The one we created should be at the bottom, the upcoming workshop. So click on it, go to the edit tab you should see see what we've done here this is kind of like a code this is this is very advanced but it's not that hard to work out this is everything I did inside that table and you see the mistake right here where I said there's almost like two dates so we just have to get rid of this one and kind of move it so I move the quotation around so and make it look like the other dates okay so that should look like the other dates as well. The March 12th down here, and it looks exactly the same. So I'm just trying to compare and just make sure they're exactly the same. And then save it like that. So now when we, now when we try that, that should be fixed. So I'm going to exit this Visual Basic, or the code. I'm going to delete this table, and we're going to try running our macro again. Didn't do it. Layout, delete. Okay, so that ever happens, you can go into your Visual Basic like that and fix it. Um, not copy and paste. No, we want to do Alt uh, T. There. So now that we've created and we've ran a macro, we can also delete a macro if we want to get rid of it later. So um, the way to do that in the Developer tab is click on the macros again. And instead of saying Run, we need to click on our upcoming workshops one, and just click Delete. And it'll say, do you want to delete this? And we say yes, and now it's gone. So that's how we create, uh, edit, and also delete a macro. So that's it. Uh, I hope that brings you one step closer to mastering Office programs uh, so you become the Office hero. And uh, I'll be posting more stuff about macros uh, in, the, in, the, in the next few days. But while you're waiting for that, uh, you can check out these two videos. And uh, if you haven't got the chance, I'd love to have you subscribe to my channel. So just click uh, on my face here on this button. So uh, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.